Hi, this is John Solari, the host of The Method Actor Speaks. And look at this lovely lady we have today. You want to introduce yourself to the audience? Hello, my name is Miss Kitty Fairlane. <laughs> Miss Kitty Fairlane. And I'm now, a singer, songwriter, actress, and dancer, and a poet. <laughs> And you all dressed up? Where are you going today? A prom? No, I came here to interview with you, silly. Okay. <laughs> all right, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, my measurements are 38, 28, and none of your business. And none of your business. <laughs> and what name were you born with? Um, Miss Kitty. Miss Kitty? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> And where are you from? I'm from Hollywood. And from where? From Hollywood. Hollywood. Yeah. That's great. Okay. <laughs> now, what is your, your, when you do Miss Fairlane, which you, you are right now, Kitty, mm -hmm. what is it about? Well, I sing and dance, and I write naughty music. So I'm like a weird Al Yankovic. Oops, I just spit on you. <laughs> but more like kitty style. <laughs> kitty style. Now, yeah. what kind of, could you give us a, a little hint of what, what do you write about or sing about? Okay. Are you famil familiar with Marilyn Monroe's I Want to Be Loved by You? I, I think a few of us have heard that one. <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to do it kitty style. <laughs> okay. I want to be texted by you, just you, and nobody else but you. I want to be texted by you, alone, shooby-dooby-doo. I want an emoticon from you, just you, and nobody else but you. I want to wink, smiley face, tongue out, laugh out loud, OMG, and send. <laughs> That's just a little bit. That's just a little, that was wonderful. Thank you. Wonderful. Ooh, is it me or is it hot in here? Well, you, it's getting a little warm. Ooh, I think it's me. Yeah, you do bring heat to the room. Ooh. <laughs> you know what? What? I have so many fans, but I'm my own biggest fan. Really? Size 16. Size 16. <laughs> yeah. I know. I love to eat, though. I'm an emotional eater. You're an emotional eater. <laughs> I'd like to eat you up right now, John. <laughs> now that sounds nice. <laughs> but we're on camera like that. <laughs> you want the audience to watch? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's, can we get, can we talk about Joyce for a little bit? Sure. Then? What do you want to talk about? All right. Joyce, where <laughs> you from? how did you get involved with this? Uh, this Ms. character. Kitty. Well, I've done improv. Right. And um, where did you do improv? Writing sketches. Second City. Wow, you're big time. In Hollywood, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we had to write sketches, and um, I was inspired by my cat. I actually was not a cat person, and uh, I adopted this stray cat and fell in love with her, and uh, I decided to write a sketch about her, about cats, kind of um, felines and. My character, I came up with Miss Kitty, there, Lane. Uh -huh. So it all inspired from my cat. And then um, I'm, I'm really passionate about about old Hollywood. So um, I love that genre. And um, I decided to pick. I was a, was really a Marilyn fan, but she was a little too soft. So I went more Jane Mansfield. She was more quirky. So um, Miss Kitty is a mix of Jane Mansfield and Betty Boop, with a little bit of crazy. Okay. mixed in and uh, I love doing comedy the element of surprise I just I just love because people don't expect it what I'm gonna do and I don't even know what I'm gonna do but it's about flirting with men and women and just um, having fun and um, just making them feel uncomfortable but it's a it's a funny uncomfortable and um, well, can I, what does yeah. that mean funny uncomfortable um, well it because uh, Marilyn and Jane are are very very sensual and sexy, and they're totally in control. So I like to make people feel like that in the audience, you know. 
a guy who doesn't really get many chicks, but I totally layer it on and flirt with him, and he's just uncomfortable. And then I'll do that to a woman, but it's um, it's it's funny. It's it's more um, just just crazy, you know. But making them laugh, like when you're uncomfortable, it's it's like what's what's going on? It's like a crazy train, and then it's that surprise laughter. It's the shock value, uh -huh. you know, which I like, which I love to do. So um, yeah, and just. Just being a woman and being comfortable with yourself no matter what weight you are and just going for it. Feel sexy no matter what weight, but own it. You know, I'm not a size two, four, or six, eight. You know, I'm a plus size girl. So um, just feeling sexy, but um, it, it's a way for me to speak because I talk about emotional eating, um, relationships gone bad. Uh, all kinds of things that people relate with. You know, men and women, they have eating issues, they have relationship issues, uh, all, you know, all kinds of stuff that's kind of uncomfortable to talk about, but it's real, and I like getting the point across to make it funny, but I'm saying something. I apologize, you have the yeah. most beautiful eyes. Oh, thank you. I have to... Thank you so much. It is sweaty, though. Look at these eyes. Now, what, what color would you call it? Say that is. Hazel? Is, that's what they call hazel? I think so. They almost so. look like silver. And well, they're green right green. now, but when I get mad, they turn blue. Really? Yeah. Blue makes me uh, angry. angry? Yes. Wow. <laughs> well, don't get angry. Well, if you want. But listen, now, when you were talking about other people's relationships and this and that, the eating, the relationship is that you that you talk about or other people oh no it's me you as a comedian or any writer you have to write what you know about um and, and those are things that i know about and that people don't talk about people a lot of people are overweight but they don't really say that they have emotional issues like what um, if, if i may ask like what yeah, it's just, it's mean, a protection. Weight is a protection. It's a shield. Okay. So people aren't aware of that. It's like, oh, I just love to eat, but really there's emotional issues behind that that they're not even aware of. I mean, I wasn't even aware of it, you know. Are you aware today or still not? I am, and I'm working on it. Cool. I worked out today. <laughs> you, when you say, well, you mean exercise or? Yeah. Or, yeah. That's interesting. And I ate good. Well, uh, yeah, today was You don't seem day. to... The weight, you know, there's some women who carry the weight, and you seem to be able to carry the weight. I saw that I have the, on Facebook the photo of you, the full photo, you know, mm -hmm. in that, in, in like the lit, you know, yeah. like, what is that you call? No, I own it, but it's, it's um, just to be able to go shopping at any store and buy something, but a lot of the stores don't carry a larger size, so then how does that make you feel? You know? How does that make so, you feel? Like shit. Okay. You know, it doesn't feel it doesn't feel good, so it's 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 being able to, you know, fit in because that's the norm. I mean the norm in Hollywood is a smaller frame. You know. Right. But but screw it. I love eating. Well that, that's it. <laughs> and we had the show before you we were just talking about Henry Joglin's has a new film coming out today called M about menopause, but he did a film years ago that I enjoyed called Eating. I don't know if you ever saw it. Mm -mm. Try to look at it. It's oh, pretty, wow. He has all the actresses, they're talking about eating. Right. And a lot of them are right. overweight. Actors yeah. And, and all the things. But Wonderful we, film. Oh, good. I'll check it out. Really? But we also have all our own vices. It's just how you, you know, deal with it and, and I own it but there's there's of course emotional baggage with that that's you, the part, you, you yeah. have to overcome just with anything it's like you could be a smoker drinker you're a sex addict you're a shopping addict you you clean house you're a, you know freak at cleaning house and all kinds of things even if it's a little thing it could be really intense but it's how you deal with your vices and eat, just acknowledging it you know is that you what know, you get, know, you know, you know, you <laughs> know, 
is that what got you into doing stand-up comic? Or how did that come about, and how has that helped you? Um, if, if no, I, I've always loved comedy. I've always, I've always loved it. I, because I do stand-up, but I do musical, it's more performance art. I do uh, musical stand-up comedy. Because I play a character, Miss Kitty Fairlane, and when I come out on stage, that's my persona. And I break character within that. I show myself and um, other characters, but that's my main energy when I come out. Because I, I sing different songs, so I change my, my uh, vocal tone, different voices. Because she's crazy. She's a crazy train. She's like a cat with nine lives, so I have lots of layers I can play with when I'm performing. Have you studied singing, or is it just um, natural voice? I'm more of a performer. I'm not a singer. <laughs> I can sing, but I'm not like uh, uh, I wasn't. A t I'm not a textbook singer. You know the theater singers who that's, sing oh, like so they not, sing, yeah. which I don't. That's not my. Vo I don't. My ear can't stand that stuff. What it sounds like. This is how you sing. This is how you sing. To me, that's totally uninteresting. I like raw voices. It's more about the emotion behind it. It's like you can't sing, but if if you're like your energy's behind it and I have and I throw comedy in there. So it's like you overlook, oh, she's not such a great singer, but she's hilarious and getting the point across. Uh, I forgot where I saw it someplace, but in in England, they were saying it's it's more important the passion behind the singing than the singing. Right. I forgot how the quote went, but it, it's more about the rawness that you bring. Because you can hear singing, it's like, oh, she can sing pretty, but it's not, it's not clicking with you. You don't feel a connection. So, uh, um, could being believable, does that, is, is that what you're yeah. trying to say? In the, yeah. You want the audience to feel and come along, with just like theater. Yeah. You know, you, you know when you have the, the audience, mm -hmm. when you're doing well and you're into it. So that, that must be, what does that feel like for you? I get a high. Like I like to drink yeah. and I don't do drugs, but I, that's my high. Like you, I can go for days and I'm just high from my last performance because you were in your zone. You know, and you had nothing to rely on. It wasn't a drug. Um, it's, it's the highness from it. You're not drinking now. Yes, I am. Oh, get your little Actually, flask. Actually, I have my little flask. Do you want some? <laughs> no. You sure? No, positive. But is it's is just that water. a? Because I was. Water. No, I believe you because I was going to say you have you, you have this quality about you that you know some people need a little booze to go on stage. I have a, it could, I have a wine or two. <laughs> it, it could be rough at night. What was it like starting out doing this? What? I, I luckily I was lucky. Acting, I've been acting for a while, but it's been inconsistent. Um, when I got into doing stand-up, which I had no idea, I would, I'd be like, no thanks, I would never do that. But I got into it on accident. I auditioned for this, uh, it had a stand-up comedy um, contest that I saw in LA Casting and for three minutes and I was like oh you know I'll do that because if you win you win a part in a, in a comedy a sad comedy as the lead so I'm like you know what I'll, I'll do it I have my piece Miss Kitty Fairlane three minutes and I sang a song in that so I just decided to play Kitty doing the stand-up I didn't get asked back from that but a woman who was a comedian who was in the contest saw me and asked me to do the ice house um, and she asked me to do eight minutes and I was like eight minutes are you Eight minutes, it's like forever. So I had two months to prepare. And um, I remember when I was writing it, I would get nervous, like, I'm so nervous, I'm gonna, you know, two months before, then, you know, six weeks, five weeks, four weeks. And then I just told myself, be calm. Whenever I'd get nervous about it, I'm like, put everything down and like, let it go. So then from then on, I've been, Whenever I get nervous, I put my stuff down, like if I'm doing my hair and I get like, oh my God, what am I doing? Just calm. Because my character is very calm and in control. And if I show nervousness, if I'm on the mic and I'm 
sweating or I'm nervous. It's like I'm in control. I'm, I'm a Marilyn Monroe, Jane Mansfield, like I'm in control. So I have to show that. And that's where I've learned to, to zone in to being calm. And, I, and I'm the one. You know, it starts with me, then the audience. Now, do you prepare before you go on this to get that calmness? You know, like in acting, with how we take that moment? A few days before moment. even, like even if I know I'm performing that week, I'll, um, I know I have a show, so it's just being at peace. Mm. Just keep it, keep it cool. I mean, do, do you do that too? I mean, you have to, right? If you well, get, take it that. depends what you're doing, but... Um, that's how I have. Before I didn't know, like if I did improv shows, I didn't know how to channel that nervousness. Uh. I'd get nervous, but then also I'd get a, a, an explosion of excitement. And then when you go out, you're like, Phew. and I get that when I perform, but I have, to, it's, it's just a calmness before, and then you, you go out. But it's, it takes Calm time. Calm before the storm. Yeah. Ooh, I like that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that's a good one. But now, you said you didn't understand it before. What made, how did you learn how, how did you come to become, to understand these, these feelings? Age. Really? <laughs> it, it, no, I mean, yeah. you, you just got more comfortable with yourself? Uh, um, what do you mean with, with... When you were saying the anxiety before, you, you know, preparing yourself before you go on. You said you would have these, you didn't know where it was coming from or what. And I was pretty, I was calm before, but with stand-up, you are so raw. You're in front right. of, you're, you're, you can do a play, you rehearse, you rehearse with people, um, you're shooting a movie or a commercial. It's kind of, they can do clips, you, you have right. time to break it up. But when you're doing stand-up, you're out there raw, right. by yourself, if the, if the audience isn't on your side that night it's you and you've got whatever six eight minutes and you have to keep going it's you alone so it's just you have to be in check have you had those moments yeah. where the audience wasn't with you um yes what was that like? I mean, how do you it get sucks. through that? I know that, but um, how do you... most of the time I haven't. Luckily, I, I haven't had to deal with a lot, but you actually need that um, in order to put yourself, because you can get ahead of yourself to put yourself in check and like, what could I do different? So you, it's always a learning experience. But um, as soon as that happens, if you have a bad night, you just, you have to go out again and nail it. You can't go a long time without performing again because then you, then it really sets in. Yeah. And then it's like, I haven't performed in three months and six months. Well, I'm scared because my last time, you know, so uh, you just got to, um. So if you get knocked on your ass, you got to get up and start fighting yeah. again. Yeah. You know, you just got to get up and, and yeah. which is. I have to say, you, uh, you know, the rejection that we have in this business and, and, and being a stand-up comic, it must be a, like a, a hundred times greater than the rejection we get as actors by not getting the it's part. All, it's all hard. No one likes rejection. No, I know, but <laughs> that rejection has got to be um, yeah. devastating, and I, I think it takes a lot of Gilionis to come back. But, but what's fun is when you, when you hit... When you are performing and you have those nights and right. you make people laugh and they're like, you were so funny, that was hilarious. That's, that's why we do it. That's yeah. why you yeah. perform. I prefer, I prefer doing comedy because I love seeing, you know, making people laugh. Uh -huh. So to me, it's worth it. It's like you hit bottom, but then, you know what? I'm going to do better next time. But you learn something. Um, I had a something good happened a month ago and I was like ooh oh where I performed but it wasn't the crowd the timing was off it was earlier earlier at a party and people were getting their drinks and I was gonna perform but it was so early no one was comfortable 
It wasn't um, like at a, at a comedy place, you have tables, you have the stage, people are focused on the stage. This was at a party, and people are milling around. Mm. They haven't seen each other in a long time, so no one's paying attention to what's going on. So you're basically standing there <coughs> trying to be funny, but people are have ADD, <laughs> and you're just like, okay, this, when can I get off the stage? <laughs> you know, but... Have you ever done it with a partner, or, or is it always just you? Uh, just me. Just you. Um, well, I have dancers, like I have a few dancers, um, Hell's Bells Burlesque, I do shows with them. Uh, we've done a few where they dance in back of me, um, like I do single ladies, uh, working on a few other, I want to do Proud Mary, but I change the lyrics, so they're naughty. They're naughty, cutesy, funny. But you, do you or, do the Monday Night Burlesque? It's no. over there at the three clubs? No. D do you enjoy burlesque? Yes, I do. Definitely. I, I need to take more classes, but... Um, no, I love that, but mine's more of... Um, I do kind of my own freestyle dance, and then the singing, and just being goofy. Just oh. being a goofball. Have you ever been to that theater over there? Yeah, uh -huh. it's great. They really yeah. put on a great uh, show. They, they they keep telling me they're going to come on, and uh, and do the show. Oh, Monday Night Tees. Yeah, you know to come on and talk about it. I really would love to have them. But now, so bur there's a big difference between burlesque and stand-up comics. Uh, you know when you do that, it's, it's night and day, isn't it? Yeah, or, but it, it's performance art. Um, I perform with vaudeville shows too. So variety shows are my favorite because you're seeing stand up, you're you're seeing all these amazing performers, mm -hmm. and it's so delicious to the senses. It's just you never know what you're gonna get instead of um, straight comedy. You know, I love I love variety shows. Now, when you say you never know what you're gonna get, did you study acting? Uh, yes, went to American Academy of Dramatic mm -hmm. Arts way back in New York or uh, L.A. Pasadena. It was in Pasadena yeah. then? I was young, I was just out of high school, so it was really hard to focus because I had to work and we had lots of homework, so I was supporting myself and doing that and it was it was too hard. So I appreciate it now oh, I was gonna uh, say. because it was a dramatic school right. and I was always into comedy, so to tap into that emotional memory, memory I, I was like uncomfortable. And plus, I didn't have time. I couldn't focus on my studies. You know, I had a, I had a great time, but it was it was too hard. You know, so I, I just went there a year, and then after years later, then I got it. You know, Most people just do. connecting with being emotional, being mm. you know, being um, raw. Huh. Most people do it. it. It takes, you know, when you do it, it, it sounds. Why do I have to do this? You know? Yeah. And, uh, it's hard. It's it really it, is. It is. And uh, yeah. and you wonder, you know, when they used to do like, you know, the cat or the orange juice test or the emotional memory, private moments, but you were doing more of the Meisner technique at the academy there. And I wasn't ready. I was just out of high school, oh, and I'm yeah. like, what is going on? Because I wasn't. Um, I think being a comedian too, you want to make people laugh. And that's how you get your emotions out. That's what a lot of comedians, they, they have issues. <laughs> but um, I wasn't ready then to like, okay, so tell me, tell me about when you were younger. When you... And I had a great childhood. I have amazing parents. But it, it's hard to talk about. Just, um, I had a hard time talking when I was, when I was younger. Yeah. How I felt. Because I just keep it in. No, I'm good. Well, no, did, I'm good. do you think the acting classes helped you come out of it? Uh, yes, and then yes on stage. My alter ego on stage. But in life, do you think some of those things now today that you learn in acting class sort of helped you in your? Maybe, but not off the top of my head. Not off the top. I think, I I think just different life experiences. Well, they say, you know, Martin Landau always said, and I always appreciate it, you know, our pain as actors is gold. 
and I guess for the comedian the same right. thing. It's gold. We use it in all of our and it brings joy and laughter or whatever and yeah. tears. Our pain. No, it is because then people it is gold because people realize they're not alone. And they see like really you have that what? Me too. So to talk about it and to, to acknowledge it, whatever your issues are, it's it's gold to hear someone else present it. So you're not you know, you're not by yourself. Which is really good. I, I know you're all you're all in costume today though. You, you, you're doing something today, right? Mm -hmm. And w can you say where it's at? Yes. Uh, Club Loaded in Hollywood, and it's with Hell's Bells Burlesque. So it's a variety show. Oh. Dancing, but it's... Um, it's called Where in the, Hollywood? Uh, Loaded on Coanga. It, it's on the corner of Coanga and Hollywood Boulevard. Okay, so people... It's called The Best Little Whore House in Hollywood. Oh, I So see. it's fun. Yeah. Now, and you, they're fun. They're, they're amazing. They're... It's not a, really a whorehouse, but it's, oh, it's, that's no it's fun, comical. It, it's a spin-off. It. Actually, the best little whorehouse in Texas was created at Active Studio in New York. It was developed there. A bunch of, I don't know really? Was, yeah. A lot of people don't realize that. Oh, wow. Dolly? Yeah, all of that was oh, created in I Active Studio. Yeah. I mean, well, she did the role, but it was created there. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, the thing, yeah. And you know, you, my cousin Camille Solari, who's stand-up yes. comic, who's yeah. going to be having a baby in June. I know. Have you ever got to work with Camille yet? Or? Yes, yeah. I met her at Flappers, and I did two oh, shows right. with her. Yeah. yeah, Flappers, yeah. Now, she's been in the business uh, quite a while now. And I, I, I give her credit. I know it's a rough business. She's adorable, and she's hilarious, but she has her own... Her stage presence is amazing. She has she's beautiful gorgeous. eyes like you. She, thank you. She does, she's gorgeous, but eyes. she's quirky and she, she's real. Yeah, real. You know? So, you know, she's your niece, right? There's, and she comes from the legit side of the family, I tell people. <laughs> oh, the legit? Yeah, she comes from the legit side. <laughs> Too legit. <laughs> She's a good kid. She's John's a good director a, John's too. John's a hot mess. She's a she's a she's a good director too. And I writer. know. I she directed me in a film in Little Italy in Cleveland last year, and she was no, she's good. Wonderful. She produces too. She's yes, busy. she yeah, does it all. I mean, she's, she's one smart. of those. You know, I give her credit. She's a woman, and she knows this is a man's town, and she takes no prisoners. She goes for it. Yeah. And you have to. I give you credit. I mean, you. You were saying earlier that you were on your own, which had to be difficult. Yes. In this town, yeah. being a woman. I came from a little town, I was a big fish in a little pond, to going to Hollywood, a tadpole in the ocean. Uh, Can, are there tadpoles in the ocean? Could or be. A river? <laughs> in the river, I know that. Do you have a website or anything like that that we can let people know about? I do. Okay. MissKittyFairlane.com That's easy to remember. Mm -hmm. And you're also on Facebook. Facebook. On the Joyce. Joyce Westergaard. Now you and have, have two A's Kitty in there. I have a Miss Kitty Fairlane fan page. You have a Miss Fairlane uh, fan page. Yeah. Oh, so that's great. Oh. And is there uh, an, an email where people can get in touch with you? A number or if you want? MissKittyFairlane at Hotmail.com Because oh. I'm hot. She's hot, and that's really great. I want to thank you, and you're going to go do your thing now. And this will be up tonight, folks, so you'll get to see it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.